Collins, um, 40 years ago, Commonwealth Games. Um, um, what are, you know, what, initially, what are your memories of the Commonwealth Games from 40 years ago? Well, for a start, 40 years ago, that just <laughs> seems ridiculous. Um, so I was 21, and I'd always been, um, I started my athletic career quite early. So from the age of about 13, 14, I was training fairly seriously. Um, and it just kind of, I was training with, uh, my coach at the time was uh, Tom McNabb, who was a national coach. And I don't think he thought, to be honest, that I was going to go out there and do very much. So I think he was more, more shocked and impressed than anybody once I, I got that silver medal. But it's just one of those things, you, you know, you're 21 years old, you're going out to Canada, you, you're a bit ex- you you're a bit experienced, but, you know, you're not one of the old stages. And everything was just, it just all clicked into place. I just had one of those days where everything clicked into place. And so, and there it was. Because if that Ray, who, who came third, she'd been beating me. And um, there, there was hardly anything in it. And it was just, I think I did a really good high jumper, um, one seventy five something like that which was my personal best so i think that nudged me up the uh up the leaderboard as it were um and what was your of the other events what would i mean what was your strongest event was it long jump well it, uh, long jump i mean when i think um back i was only jumping just over six meters and of course nowadays the heptathletes are jumping six forty, six fifty. you know amazing amazing distances which in my day would have would have got you you know a medal in the individual events. So my long jump was just over six meters. My shot was the weakest. My hurdles was okay, but again it wasn't brilliant. Um, and for me, the eight hundred meters because I was basically a sprinter. The eight hundred meters was the equivalent of a marathon. I did I think I did two seventeen. I, I can't believe you know I ran as fast as that because I hated it. Two laps of the track. <laughs> Brilliant, brilliant. And um, but if we just take ourselves back a bit, and when, because you know, we just put it in a Harlow context. Um, when did you start realizing, you know, that you might be okay at this sport? Well, I suppose from the days when I was at William Martin Primary School, I used to win the sixty meter dash um, against um, a girl in my year, Linda Bishop, and um, so kind of. It was always a a, a fast, skinny little thing. Then I went on up to Lutton Bush, and Jean Ogilvie was the PE teacher there at the time, and uh, she encouraged me to go down to Harlow Athletics Club, and at the time it was the old cinder track. Uh, Cecil Smith was was the big cheese down there. Do you remember Cecil? Yes, I do. Yeah. (laughs) Um, And one of the uh, and there was a guy called Leonard May who had done a teacher exchange at um I can't remember the name of the school it'll come back to me but what a primary school he'd done a teacher exchange so he's Canadian came over to the to Harlow stayed for um about 18 months or so and he I was in his training group of you know originally uh, and we had oh we had such good fun it was yeah, absolutely brilliant brilliant days um, he went back to Canada, um, and then Roy Snow came mm-hmm. and ha- got a teaching job at Netswell School when Netswell was open. He started up a group with myself, uh, Teresa Dainton, Alan Dainton, Sandra Hayes, Dave Brown, Dave Hazel, Martin Payne, Colin Payne, all these <laughs> local, you know, l- local athletes. Um, and again, we had the best of times, and and that's when the training really kind of kicked in then you know we, we trained five times a week I think five or six times a week and he was a, such a dedicated coach I mean he really was amazing and then where was the the leap you know naturally you mentioned William Martins Latin Bush Harlow schools Essex schools and then it was like all England yeah. is that the way you started yeah. yes that's right so I did uh, I think I did five all England championships representing Essex uh, first one I think was 1970 oh, possibly it's okay it's not a history college. exam don't worry no, no. <laughs> I'm a 
to go back a few years. Yeah, so at Hurdles, it was the first time at Crystal Palace, again on Cinder Track, a Cinder Strip down the back. We weren't even allowed on the main track. <laughs> <laughs> um, seven, yeah, and then the rest of the time, I um, I did long jump. So for the other four English schools, and I won every year except one. And a girl called Joy Bowman beat me <laughs> on the last, the very last jump. <laughs> You sound like somebody who can still remember your defeats, you know. Oh, no, oh, no, no. Um, yes, yes. <laughs> yes, I can. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, I, I, yeah, I still, in a way, I'm quite competitive with myself. But, um, you know, and, that doesn't really go away from you. And and the moment where you realise, go, let's go head back to Edmonton for an hour, but the moment yeah. where you found that you... You won the silver. Do you can you still feel that moment? Oh, okay. yeah. Well, it's it's a funny old event, isn't it? Because mm. you've got to wait for the statisticians to to add up all the points. And of course, in those days, it was only five events, so rather than seven. Now, um, and myself and Yvette Ray, who I, you know I've just had in my house this week, we haven't seen each other for forty years, oh. and she was visiting her son down in Stratford, so we were going through it. We were standing outside the um, the, the warm up area, and a guy comes out. I can see his face now. A guy comes out with a clipboard, and he, he we're waiting for the result, waiting for the result because it was it was really really close. I think there was just something like twelve. 15 points in it nothing in it anyway he comes up with his clipboard and is he uh says his, in his canadian accent ray third mad stone second <laughs> and we just leapt up and down we were because she was really worried she may not have got a medal you know because the girl who came fourth was a brilliant 800 meter runner and she had uh, absolutely steamed it you know the 204 four or five or something anyway so we're standing there we're just jumping up and down we just couldn't believe it, it was just hilarious oh. so yeah we were just reminiscing about that this week oh, yeah. and then we then we calmed down and <laughs> tried to be a bit more sensible because the queen was giving us our medal of course <laughs> oh, co oh right yeah so you yeah, got the queen we were the only ones who were presented by the queen so oh. <laughs> and, and I imagine you still had the medal um and do you still have any moment? I mean, you know, we're watching stuff now and you can see stuff on YouTube, etc. Is there any film yeah, or any footage of you? Nothing. Oh. Not a sausage. Nothing at all. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, because it was, it, we didn't have mobile phones. Mm. We barely, well, I didn't have an email account in 1978. <laughs> and so, so to get them, you know, obviously my mum and dad knew from watching the television. Mm. I think that was the first time they bought coloured television, especially for the games. Uh, uh, but not to be able to contact, you know, you go to the other side of the world now and you WhatsApp somebody, within two seconds they've mm. got a message telling you the result and how you're feeling and all the rest of it. Yeah. But it was that sort of delayed delay thing. Mm. Uh, but there's no footage. I cannot, there's nothing, uh. absolutely nothing. Not, I haven't even got a photograph of us on the rostrum. Uh. So... Uh, I mean, I've got some other photographs, mm. but nothing really, nothing uh, during our competition. It was very odd. Ah, that's a shame. I'm sure that could be explored further, you know. But um, yeah, uh, some one of my friends has said, "Oh, you may be right to the BBC and see if there's any, mm. um, you know, uh, there must be footage because clearly, but mm. whether they've archived it how yeah. far back, I don't know. It'd be we're, brilliant if something did come up. Or even the Canadian Broadcasting Company, but that's for another yeah. another day. Um, so yeah. leaping ahead now to 2018. What do you think when you watch the heptathlon now? What do you think of the standards that you see? Oh, it's in, it's incredible. Well, again, Yvette and I were talking this week. We didn't just about say, for example, diet mm. and taking on board um, liquids, water. Well, nobody spoke to us about <laughs> what we should be eating, what we should be, how much we should be drinking in mm. terms of water. Nobody, we didn't have that conversation with anybody. We just kind of. I think we must have made a cheese sandwich or something, stuck it in our rucksack, and, and off we went. Mm. And now it's so uh, right down to the finest detail and all this stuff about marginal gains, marginal gains, but they look so fit, mm. so unbelievably fit, don't they? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, um, do you think, looking at athletics and whether we talk about athletics in Harlow or, or around the country, what... what state do you think athletics in britain is in at the moment is it a healthy one or do you have any concerns um i it's healthy 
healthy in as much as it, it's got you know high pro, much higher profile now. I think, but I still think um, sport in you know PE physical education in school is not the same as it was when I started. And I don't want to sound like an old fogey, but the pressures on teachers now in general. You know, you just haven't got... When, when I started, we had eight comprehensives in Harlow. Mm -hmm. We had at least six at least six PE teachers in each of the schools. Plus, you know, you'd get your geography teacher who was interested in rugby or, mm. you know, a math teacher who was an ex-athlete. And they would run teams and uh, the, the amount of participation just seemed... I don't know whether I'm talking out of turn or whatever, but it just seemed immense and... You know, I've, I've taught at Mark Call for the last nine years of my teaching career and the tracks there. Mm. Well, you know, you don't you don't see you didn't see crowds of youngsters there three or four times a week training as it was, you know, in, in I suppose the olden days. So I don't know if the participation is is as it was and if there is the in infrastructure there for youngsters who have got potential and, you know, to push it through. Mm. Okay. Well, I don't want to end on a low point. So finally, um, no. you must be very proud of yourself and proud of everybody that, that you know, you won that silver medal and you won it for, for yourself, your club and, 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 and for Harlow. You must be very proud of what you achieved. Oh, I, I'm, yeah, I look back and in, in some ways you think, I can't believe that was me. You know, I can't believe I could do that at 21. Um, and I was always very, very proud of Harlow. I just think Harlow has always been, you know, all, I wasn't quite born born there, but moved there when I was two years old and absolutely loved Harlow. So for any athlete or in any any field, really, to, to be, you know, bring that back to Harlow, I just think that was very, very special, really special. Brilliant. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that.